people do not realize, southeastern Michigan holds the largest Native American population in the state. According to national estimates, over 70 percent of Native American people no longer live on reservations. The majority of those do live in urban settings. Hello and thanks for joining us. I'm Laurel Hess and this is Comcast Newsmakers. Joining me is the Executive Director of American Indian Health and Family Services of Southeastern Michigan, Ashley Tuomi. Thank you so much for Thank joining you. us today. And uh, there are several, I understand, uh, urban clinics out there uh, throughout mm -hmm. the state uh, serving the uh, American Indian population? Well, we're the only one in the state of Michigan, but there are over 30 other urban clinics throughout the United States. Um, that are responsible for providing care for people who are off of a reservation. And is this something that is in conjunction with um, the reservations or completely separate to serve those yeah. uh, in urban settings? Um, it's completely separate. We are um, mostly funded by Indian Health Services, um, so kind of the same funding revenue, um, but it's separate from the reservations. Is, there's, is there a misconception out there that uh, there are not a large amount of American Indians. It's a very minority, small population, and most of them live on Indian reservations. Yeah, I think, you know, when you look at the total population, we're about one to two percent of the total population a lot of times. And um, so when I meet people here in Detroit, they're really surprised that there's actually natives here in the area. Um, and when you look at census data, you know, there's over 60,000 natives that live in the Detroit area. Um, so many people are very surprised and think that everyone does live on a reservation. What are some of the unique challenges that uh, American Indians face when they choose to leave a reservation, mm -hmm. uh, make a life in an urban setting, mm -hmm. and so they don't have that support group that they had uh, perhaps um, when they were on the reservation? Yeah, that's the one of the biggest struggles is finding that connection and finding that family that you're used to having on a reservation. Um, and having access to cultural services is very difficult um, and making sure that we can integrate those cultural services in their health care um, and not treat them as separate. Whereas on the reservation, they have a lot more access to programs and services that are more unique to what they need in their belief system. And what are some of those unique um, things that perhaps you're providing at uh, the health clinics that mm -hmm. you wouldn't normally be able to get? Mm -hmm. So we have um, cultural healers that come in. Um, we provide sweat lodges and different ceremonies. Um, we have our smudging that we are able to do and integrate into like our behavioral health sessions um, and, and have that well-rounded planning involved when we're working with our patients. And how many people, are, not a, certainly a, a definite number, but about how many um, people are you serving on a weekly or monthly basis? I would imagine uh, quite a few, correct? Yeah, it, I mean, it fluctuates throughout the year. We have about um, 800 active clients that we have um, within each year. Um, that visit us for different things. Um, some of them are medical patients, some are behavioral health, but we also have community programs. We have a youth group and other activities that go on as well um, that are available for people in the community. Would you imagine there are an awful lot of uh, American Indians out there in urban communities that have no idea that you guys are there, that you are a resource for that? Yes, uh, definitely a lot. You know, I think we really target the people who don't have their own health insurance or their access to health care. Uh, because that's a place that they can come to get free health care. So those are the people that generally know about us, those that have their own insurance or kind of have their own lives kind of going on. They're less likely to, to utilize our clinic, so we have to do a lot of outreach and letting them know that, you know, we're available and we have other programs besides just, you know, medical care and behavioral health care. And they may be able to afford health care, but as you mentioned, it may not be uh, the type of health care that fits mm -hmm. in with them culturally. Right. So another need as well. All right, thank you so much yeah. for joining us today. Thank you. For more information on today's topic, you can visit AIHFS.org. Today's Comcast Newsmaker was Ashley Tuomi, the Executive Director of American Indian Health and Family Services of Southeastern Michigan.